FPV drones have been described as like a roller coaster where you get to decide where the roller coaster goes. That is so right. You put the goggles on your face, you become the drone, and then you do things that you could never do with your body. You experience speed, you experience agility, you can go places, you can do tricks, you can... <sighs> it is incredible. It's like those dreams where you're flying, except it's happening in real life. And the best part about FPV drones is that when you crash, unlike if you were riding a motorcycle or a skateboard, when you crash, you don't go to the hospital. You just lift up your goggles, you go get your drone, you open up your wallet, and you buy replacement parts for whatever you broke. And that is why you're watching this video today. I'm gonna guess that if you're watching this video today, you already kind of understand what's so appealing about FPV drones. You wanna get into FPV drones. But when the time comes to repair your FPV drone, you won't know how to do it. You see, you can buy pre-made FPV drones and they're great, they're really good. They fly really good right up until you crash them. And then because you didn't build them, you don't know how to fix them. And so sooner or later, everybody in FPV is going to have the experience that I am trying to walk you through in this video. The experience of taking a pile of parts on the bench and building them into an FPV drone. That's what we're going to do today. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. How to build an FPV drone. Let's do it. Here's last year's example of the quad that we're going to be building today. And I show you that because if I just showed you all these parts on the bench, that wouldn't be very exciting and inspiring. And you're going to need some excitement and inspiration to get through this because this is going to be a little, this isn't going to be a 10 minute, oh, we built a quadcopter. And I only show you the high, you know, like those recipes they show on TikTok where it's just like slap, 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 slap. And then suddenly you've got a great four course meal. No, we're going to be showing you every step of the way. That's the point. You want that. That's why you're here. I'm gonna make it as simple as I can and try to focus on just the right amount of background information so that when you're done, you have a sense of why you did the things you did. But there is a deep, deep well of information in the world of FPV. And there's gonna be some things that I just say, do what I said because I said it and we skip over it. Before we get into the actual content of this video, I need to tell you one more thing. This series is not going to be just one video. If I put all the information in this series in one video, it would be way too long and it would be difficult for you to find the specific information that you're looking for. So this series is going to be broken up into several videos. They are going to be in a playlist and the playlist is linked down in the video description below. And usually when I say that, I think probably like 25% of people actually go to the video description and find the playlist and go look at it. But you should really do that because otherwise you're gonna finish this video and not really know where to go from there. So definitely do that. In addition, each of these videos is going to have chapter markers with timestamps. Those are gonna be in the video description. As well, YouTube will place those in the timeline below the video. So if there's something I'm talking about and you're like, yeah, 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 I know this part, you can go down to the timeline and look for the next chapter marker and find the part of the video that you wanna be watching. Some of the videos in this series are going to apply to you and some are not. And the reason for that is that different people are gonna be using different video transmitters. What's a video transmitter? If you don't know, we're gonna talk about it. But we're gonna be building this quadcopter with three different video transmitters, depending on which video system you decide to use. And so you will need to pay attention to the title of the videos because some of them will say, only watch this video if you've got the analog video transmitter. Only watch this video if you've got the walk snail video transmitter or the DJI video transmitter. Enough said about that. Let's get actually into the content. The first piece of the quadcopter we'll look at is the frame. And these are all the frame parts. And there is some other hardware here that we're gonna be seeing later in the video, some screws and so forth. And the frame basically just holds the quadcopter together. The frame that we're using in this build is the QAVS. 
It's the JB edition of the QAVS. It's my signature frame. I had a little bit of a hand in designing it. And if you really want to know more about that frame and why I think it's so great, I did a release video and I'll put a link to that down in the video description. That's another thing I'm going to do a lot in this series is say, there's a link to that in the video description. You can go watch those videos if you want to, but you don't have to. I don't want you to get overwhelmed and distracted. I want you to finish the process of building this quadcopter but if you're hungry for more information, it's all down there in the video description below. Next, we've got the motors and the motors make the propellers spin around so that the quadcopter can fly, right? It's not really a mystery what they do. These motors are made by Lumineer. They're branded Xylo. They are the Xylo Stealth Motor. That doesn't really tell you anything about a motor except who makes it and the fancy name that the manufacturer decided to give it. Uh, the size of the motor is 2207. And what that tells us is that the motor is 22 millimeters in diameter and seven millimeters in height. If you were to take a caliper and measure the height of this outer part of the motor, it wouldn't be seven millimeters. That's actually measuring the internal stator, it was the piece that it's called, the internal part that has these windings wrapped around it. So. But uh, when you see a motor and it's 2207 in size, it's telling you the dimensions of the motors. Larger motors are more powerful and are typically sized uh, with larger props. 2207 is just about the perfect size for the props that we're going to be using on this build. Oh, props means propellers. It's cool to not say the whole word. This motor is 1800 kV, and that's the other relevant spec of a motor. And the discussion of how a motor kV works is pretty deep, but suffice it to say that the kV is selected based on the size of the propeller you're using and the battery voltage that you're using. And 1800 kV is perfect for a 6S battery, which is what we're going to be using for this build. Well, a motor can't make a quadcopter fly without propellers. The propellers we're using are the Gemfan Hurricane 51477. This is also my signature prop. That's why it's my signature purple color. It is one of my favorite props. A deep discussion of how to select a prop and what the difference between different prop types are is outside the scope of this discussion. Uh, we're going to give you these to try out and you can tr I, I encourage you, props aren't that expensive, uh, I encourage you to try out other styles of props and see uh, which ones maybe you like better. The key thing about the props that you need to know is that they are five inches in diameter. So this circle that is prescribed by the prop is five inches in diameter. And you're going to want to keep that the same for any other props that you uh, buy. The frame and the motors and the battery are all sort of tailored towards a five inch prop. There's a little bit of variance. You could like you could buy there, people make 5.1 inch props or maybe even a 5.2 inch prop. Or there's some props that are like 4.9 inch props. But you're going to want to stay in that range if you're experimenting with different props. Uh, you wouldn't want to use like a four inch or a six inch prop that wouldn't work well. A six-inch prop wouldn't even fit on the frame. This little piece of equipment is the flight controller, also known as the FC by FPV pilots who don't like to say the whole name of things because they're too cool. Um, <laughs> the flight controller is basically a tiny little computer that makes the quadcopter fly. You see, unlike like fixed wing airplanes where you have wings and control surfaces. And like, if you didn't have a computer controlling them, they would basically just glide and do what they're told. They can be controlled completely mechanically. Multi-rotors have no sort of aerodynamic propensity toward flight. If you take a multi-rotor and you were to just shut down the flight controller, it would just basically tumble out of the air. The flight controller is constantly steering the motors and making the quadcopter move in the way that it needs to move to do what it's being told to do. Without the flight controller, you basically just got a projectile. All of the pieces of the quadcopter are going to connect to the flight controller and it is going to take data from them and output data to the motors and basically make the quadcopter fly. This is the ESC. ESC stands for Electronic Speed Controller. Literally, no one says that term out loud. We all just say ESC. And what the ESC does is take power from the battery and send it to the motors. 
And unlike a like a DC brushed motor where simply passing current through the motor is enough to make it spin, these are brushless motors, if you know what that is. And brushless motors need the electricity to be sent to them in a very specific way, in a very with very specific timing and in a very specific sequence. And the ESC's job is basically to make the motors spin to send the electricity through the motors in the exact right way that makes the motor spin. Another way to think about the ESC is that the flight controller talks to the ESC to tell the ESC how fast each of the motors should be going, and then the ESC's job is to actually make the motors go that fast. Without an ESC, your motors wouldn't spin. What makes an FPV drone an FPV drone is that there's a camera on the drone and a video transmitter that transmits data from the camera to a set of goggles that you wear on your face and that lets you basically see what the drone is experiencing. And it turns out there are several different video systems that you could be using to get that experience. They all do the same thing. They take data from a camera they transmit that data wirelessly over to a set of goggles that you wear on your face. Um, but the three systems that we're gonna be building in this series are analog video, walk snail, and DJI. And this is not the place to go into a deep dive into the pros and cons and differences of what make, make you select each of those systems. I've actually got a video about that and I'm gonna link it in the video description. If you have not yet settled on a video system and you're trying to decide, or maybe you're flying analog today, which is kind of the budget choice, but you're thinking about upgrading to a high definition digital system, you should totally go watch that video. What that means is that at some point in this series, I'm going to say, if you're building the analog version, watch this video. If you're building the Walksnail version, watch this video. And if you're building the DJI version, watch this video. And you're going to want to only watch the video that pertains to whichever video system you're using. And if you use a video system that isn't one of these three, I'm sorry, we're not going to be showing you how to do that. Although perhaps with a little bit of ingenuity, you could figure it out. So these are the goggles that you might be using if you're using analog, walk snail, or DJI, but we're not providing those. You bought those separately. What comes with the kit is the camera and the video transmitter because what comes with the kit is the stuff that goes in the quadcopter. So if you're building the analog quadcopter, your video transmitter is going to be the Xylostax 5G8 and your camera is going to be the Cadex Rattel. For walk snail, we're going to be using the Avatar HD VTX V2 and the Avatar HD Pro camera. This camera is really cool because it has extremely good low light sensitivity. You can fly this thing well into dusk and not even notice that it's getting dark. And for DJI, we're going to be using the DJI O3 Air Unit, uh, which is DJI's latest and greatest. In order to fly the quadcopter, you're going to need a controller. The controller will have joysticks and switches that you use to tell the quadcopter what you want it to do. The selection of a controller is actually pretty personal. Different people have different preferences for what kind of ergonomics they want. Some controllers are larger, some are smaller, some are more like video game controllers. And there's pros and cons to each, but for the sake of this video, we're just gonna pick one and we're gonna use it for the tutorial. And the one that we're gonna pick is the Radiomaster Boxer. This one is actually my daily driver and one reason we're picking it is that I actually think it's my favorite. So let's just use it since this is my build video. But that's not the only reason. I wouldn't pick it if it wasn't also a good choice for somebody building their first or second quadcopter. It is fairly reasonably priced it is fairly full featured, it's very well built, and I think the ergonomics are likely to work for a variety of people. This little piece of equipment is the receiver. And the receiver's job is to receive signals from the controller. So we move the joysticks on the controller, we flip the switches on the controller, the controller takes those commands, it converts them into wireless radio signals that get transmitted out that antenna, and then the receiver has an antenna that receives those signals and transmits them to the flight controller so the flight controller knows what we want the quadcopter to do. Um, one thing you need to know about a receiver and controller is that they need to be compatible with each other. So there are different types of receiver. It's kind of like talking about if you have a Windows PC or a Mac PC, 
right? Kind of like different operating systems. Basically, there's different ecosystems for controllers and receivers. And if they don't talk the same protocol, then they won't be able to communicate with each other. Uh, the protocol that we're going to be using in this build is called ExpressLRS, abbreviated here as ELRS. And without going into too much detail about all the different receiver protocols we could have selected, the reason we selected ExpressLRS is number one, it's reasonably cheap. The hardware is not too expensive. Number two, it has great range and penetration. So different receiver protocols have different range and penetration. That is how far away from yourself the aircraft can go before you lose link and what's called fail safe when that happens. The aircraft basically just drops out of the air and then you have to walk and go get it. Nobody wants that. Express LRS is a modern high tech receiver protocol that has excellent range and penetration. Under ideal conditions, you could theoretically go tens of kilometers or more under real world conditions, you'll pretty much be able to fly all over the park or wherever it is you're flying and you probably won't fail safe. At this point in the video series, you should understand two main things. First of all, the structure of the video series, there's a playlist down in the video description that you should open and you're going to watch that playlist in order one video after the other until you get to the part where I say, only watch this video if you're using the DJI air unit, uh, or the walk snail or the analog. And then you're only gonna watch the videos that pertain to the system that you're using. You should also understand in general, the parts of a multi-rotor and what each of them does at a very high level. The frame, the flight controller, the ESC, the motors, the props, the video transmitter, the camera, and the receiver. That's gonna do it for this video. Now it's time to head on down to the playlist in the video description and move to the next video in the series where we will begin actually putting this damn thing together. I'll also put a card on screen. If your platform that you're watching on shows cards, you may see a card on screen with a link to the playlist. I'll see you in the next one.